If I say, oh, I'm from the IDP, my heart breaks because everybody will turn around yeah. like as if you choose to I be there. you chose to be there. There are a lot of st stories you hear about a lot of things that are happening. One of them is that of displacement. Displacement, uh, recently we learned uh, of the flooding that happened in a lot of states in Nigeria. A lot of people have been moved or displaced from their houses. And some, like that, is caused is by natural disaster or what has happened. But for some, it is due to the crisis that has happened in the country. Like, as you all know, for a couple of years now in Nigeria, there has been um, a lot of displacement that happened in the Northeast. People were moved out of their chase, out of their house. People were killed. Some people were relocated into IDP camps. And one of the IDP camps is the one I'm in here in Abuja. And I came here today because I learned of a school, which you guys can see behind me there, of a school where we can help in one little way or the other. I came here to hear about what they can do because some, I think like a couple, two years ago or three years ago, just before COVID, I came and I was told that you could sponsor a child with just 15 hours a day, you know? So today I decided to come and see them and ask, what can I do to help these kids? And today we'll be going in to see either the head teacher or somebody whoever is in charge to be able to tell us exactly what we will need to help the school. That's why we're here. Please introduce yourself, sir. Yeah, my name is Luka Yajuma. Okay. I'm from Borno State, Gozai local government area. Oh, okay. I'm part of the IDP here. And I'm, right now, I'm the secretary to the IDP camp, New Kuchungo. Oh, okay. Yeah, and also the head teacher of IDP Shared Prosperity School. Okay. In the camp. Okay. So, um, how long has this school been uh, here now? Yeah, this school has been established since 2018. Okay. Uh, we have uh, run for four years, and we are into five years now. Five years? Yeah. Okay. All right. The uh, school was built by OAB Foundation. OAB. OAB Foundation. What is that place? OAB. Uh, that is the name of their NGO. They call it OAB. Okay. And later, when we established the school with three volunteer teachers, we started the school with three volunteer teachers. Okay. That's how the school come into an existence. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the question I know most people want to ask, or one of one of the things I learned when I came that time was that uh, the students pay a certain amount of fees to go to school. Can you elaborate on what they pay and what it's like? Yeah, uh, where well, the year we establish, uh, we have uh, the idea, we have things in mind, but we don't have means of implementing it or establishing it in the life of the student. In 2017, 20, 2015, 16, 17, there is no any basic school in the camp. Uh, when this uh, school was put into uh, uh, structured in 2017, we tell ourselves that we need to at least impact knowledge for the kids in the camp. Not because they are in the IDP, that doesn't mean that oh, they are not supposed to be in school. And from there, we uh, have the concept of their parents telling them, okay, this is what we will do for the children, and this is what you can contribute to you as your own part. From that time, we ask the parent to contribute 1,000 per annum. That is the initiation for three terms. Okay. They are contributing 1,000 naira per session. Uh, yeah, per session. And okay. what we are using the, that 1,000 naira for is mm. we use that 1,000 naira to buy whiteboard marker, uh, register, record diary, and we uh, look for curriculum in the F uh, curriculum for the FCT. Okay. Abuja. That is what we use that money for. We start with 85 pupils in the school. Okay. Right around the pupils come from different angles or in their camp, the, the, when they see the impact, the changes in some of their children's lives, some of their parents decide sending their children into the school. As for now, I'm telling you, we have 200 and six something children in the school. Wow. 64 oh, children. Yeah. 264 children yeah. in the school. So how many classes do you have, like, 
We have about uh, eight classes. We have a uh, play class. We have nursery one and two. We have uh, primary one to five. Primary one to five. Yeah. Okay. But uh, in terms of uh, contributing things, in 2019, we started in 2018. 18. In 2019, we flagged up a campaign, a 15 year old can keep a child in school. That 15 year old can keep a child in school, we came with the idea of, okay, during that moment, if we have 30 puppies in our class, at least they are paying 15 naira per day. If you multiply 15 naira per one child for five days in a week, it will give you 250. Okay. And if you multiply that 250 by four weeks in a month, it will give you 1,000. Okay. If every child pay that 1,000 per month, that is we have 30,000. That 30,000 can keep the volunteer teachers and the, it will keep the school running. That is the uh, the the campaign we flag up in 2019. Okay. When we flag up that campaign, it is the Pathfinder International Organization who buy into that idea. And when they came, they say, okay, they will try to do it for five months. And they, they, that is the duration of the project. They say they will do it for five months. By that time, we'll have 172 puppies in school. And uh, although by during that moment, they did not, they say, okay, what are the things we will do with that money? How are we going to spend that money? And we tell them what we will do is, we don't want money in our pocket, but we need to do things accordingly and we need trust. We tell them, okay, 50, 50, 50 will go to the teachers, 50% will go to the school maintenance and the children. How are we going to use that uh, 50% for the school maintenance of the children? During that moment, we have a lot of challenges in terms of uh, children who are coming with empty stomach and they will uh, sleep during when the class is going on. And we you tell their parents, let them have something to come, but most of them, they are not compliant to it. We tell them, okay, if we do that feeding program, it will motivate the children to be in school and the learning will take place consciously or unconsciously when they're in their class. From there, we tell them they can go and buy foodstuffs and bring it into the school. And we played with one woman during that moment to cook for them and they have, been, she, they have been cooking for three times in a week. That is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And what they would do, we, by the, during that moment, we used to video all what they brought, how we cook, how we share, and send it to them, at least as a video clip, to know this is how we are using their yeah, money. money. That is, yeah. out of 86,000 Naira, we use 43,000 Naira for a feeding program. And it so has been doing successfully during that moment and for the 50 43 we used to go and buy whiteboard marker sometimes we buy detergent for the toilet for the cleaning for some of the necessary things that we need uh in the school so that the school will run effectively for the 86 that that is uh 50 percent that goes to the teachers during that time we have uh, eight volunteer teachers and they will come down by themselves and share this 10 10,000 naira for the volunteer teachers that is how they have been doing it and they start doing it in october november december there is no school they did it january february uh march 2020 the corona pandemic comes in and they have stopped the, the question I want to ask now, based on the fact that you've already said uh, some people volunteered and how that one had gone, what is the present need of the school now? Yeah, uh, as I said, we the school has laid its foundation basically on the volunteers. And sometimes coping with the volunteers, total volunteers, is very difficult. And uh, as I said earlier, that now almost all of the teachers are volunteer, except one that is employed by another uh, person and deploy them uh, here, deploy her here. And she's the one that she, she has guaranteed that at the end of the month, she has something at least. Okay, so that's to say that all the other volunteers here, they're just volunteering, no salary is coming or anything, except for that one that is guaranteed no. that is being employed by somebody by else some, yeah. that just was just redeployed here to come and work. Sure, wow. that is uh, what's happened. And also, we have uh, so scarcities of uh, classrooms. Like if we, you go to the school, if you check 
we will have open space where we put things and if someone can help us to just to cover up their place okay. at least to make the place a conducive for the children to learn it okay. will be very it will go in a long way because okay. these things they need and also the textbooks for the children like english and math is very important is very vital it keeps the children busy even after the school like when the they don't have that excess textbooks what they would do after school is just plain because there's no homework but in that textbook sometimes especially modular you have the workbook where the teachers will give them more work so that at least it will engage them to be busy well they are at home and it will go in a long way that is uh, the truth of the matter but the the problem of the school is how the teachers will be stabilized because now the teachers are not stable and you can't guarantee those like for who work for volunteering he may decide or she may decide to okay. say no i will stop today okay, because they're not getting any pay at all there's they're not getting any payment at, at all, all for now to sponsor a child as it stands now okay we have 262 two children in school yeah. to sponsor a child now what would you say would be the minimum to be able to sponsor a child that will keep a child in school and also remove these teachers from this volunteer uh, uh, name and put them on permanent what would you think it would be ideal for to be paid for a child yeah uh, although because of the economic crisis yeah. but we are still pleading with if we can get 4,000 per term mm -hmm. at least all the teachers will be on uh, at least a stipend where they will not call themselves as a volunteer okay. and the children will be in school and at least everything will go that's smooth. 4 thousand per term uh, that's 12 thousand in a year, in a year. So yeah. all right I, I really appreciate this I think we should maybe take a step outside so that we show part of the school outside okay this is the place and yeah. it is open yeah. the challenge we have when the children are learning mm. like if they see their mothers yeah. their parents, parents passing by yeah. they will be shouting oh mm. daddy why okay. that? Oh. and at least we need the place to be covered okay. and we need the place to be like flood flood so yeah. that at least the the, the the place will be conducive for them to yeah. to learn okay. like especially they came with a uh, clean uniform but because of the environment, environment they'll go home with dirty go home with dirty i can uniform. see that this one's like two classes yeah, we have, have two here. classes we have play class and we have uh nursery one or oh, play class and nursery one yeah. How many people do you have in the play class now? Yeah, we have right now, we, although they are not, sometimes this one will come from this one, not come but they are about 30. 30, 30 now, yeah. Okay. So, based on what you're seeing, just to ask on the rough estimate, what do you think will go to cover, to, to cover and cement this floor? What do you think the cost will be like? Yeah, uh, as for now, the truth I can't yeah, tell. You can't tell. Because okay. you can no cost. Okay. Uh, Alright, we'll, we'll just take a look at it and uh, I believe there are a lot of people who may want to do this because I think this is a good project to be able to make this place conducive for children. Coming to check out one of the classes here. Uh, okay, good morning. Okay, this is the open class. You also talked about class. So um, this this will also require you to be like sectionalized or, or covered. Yeah, or covered. I like to go to my place. Believe you me, I like. If I can spend nine eight mm. to nine years, I do not see my mother. Mm. It tells you how wow. far I am pleading my heart. That's serious. She's there in the Cameroon. The refugees in okay. Cameroon. And my father. Okay, some of our people were moved, we went to Cameroon as refugees. Yeah, we have many people that are in Cameroon as refugees. Many members of my, see, many, wow. thousands of them, they are in Cameroon. Not in Nigeria. Because the way you flee out. Uh, yeah, you just go you in that direction. At least you're safe in that direction, you stay there. You stay there. Yeah. Amazing. And nobody likes to live. In, in, in a country whereby 
is not your home, it's not your country, yeah, and yeah. after all, there's nothing you're doing tangibly there. Doing tangible, it depends on the handout, mm. and you are living there. It's not good, yeah. and nobody likes to live. Huh? If you ask thousands of, like hundreds of people living yeah. in the camp, yeah. if you tell them, do you want to leave this camp? They will tell you yes. yes. Nobody likes to live inside. If you call me some in other place, if you tell, if I say, oh, I'm from the IDP, my heart breaks because everybody will turn around, yeah. like as if you choose to I be. I choose you chose to be there. You know, it's just the condition it's of what has brought to I you. I tell my people, I tell yeah. everyone that yeah. you, on those days, I see people in refugees, I see people in IDP, like not in Nigeria. Mm. I never imagined. I never thought of being there. Mm. I never. And I was not, I don't have that dream that one day I will be in this camp. But unfortunately, I find myself, it started with me, it started with my family, mm -hmm. and I find myself in. Wow. Crazy. Camp, yeah. All right, thank you very much. I really appreciate this. We'll go back and see what we can do, and then we'll come back and uh, probably see. What I'll do is I'll put his email address or his link down below. If you want to say anything to him or you want to ask any more questions, please free to free to do that and if you want to contribute also we'll put a link so that we'll contribute and then whatever thing that we do here we're going to make videos of it like he explained previously and also post it so that you guys can see what we're doing for the community because collecting people's money you need to show them what you have done with it you know all right thank you guys for watching thank you for having us come to speak to you thank and you thank sir. you for taking us around the school thank you sir. all right thank you very much yeah, yeah, yeah.